Welcome to everybody joining me, Will the Backyard Canuck. Today as we talk about what's been going on in my yard. Well, firstly, I'm a terrible content creator, as there are so many times that I forget to get my camera out as I'm doing something in the yard, and it isn't until I'm in the middle of something that I think that it would have been good to include into a video. But before we dive into that more, what I've been doing is watering, watering, watering some more. Two to three times a day out there, if not more, trying to keep moisture on the soil where all the grass seed was put down from the last time. Sometimes I just set the sprinkler up if I have other stuff I'm working on and move it every 15 minutes or so. Or if I'm in more of a rush, I go out and just hand water with the hose the areas where the grass seed are. And it's been hot. After I noticed the first grass seed starting to sprout, after about 10 days, I went out and did my second dose of the spring starter fertilizer I had been I'd done before. They say you're supposed to do it two weeks apart, but it ended up being around 18 days between doses due to scheduling and work. With the starter being a spray fertilizer, I also wanted to make sure that the grass had started growing actively to help develop the root systems. I did my first real cut around two days later after that because the yard was starting to look a little like a jungle and I was worried that wood ticks would start moving into the tall grass. Also, I didn't want the tall grass to crowd out the baby grass starting out, so it's time for a cut. Now this is the part where I am a terrible content creator, where I went and did all the trimming around the yard before I thought of pulling out the camera. As you can see though, the lawn looks like a jungle. In a few select spots, the grass was almost 10 inches tall. Now this isn't an ideal to be cutting this much grass off at once, but I wanted to make sure the seed started to take root before coming through with the mower. I did set the mower up an extra notch to try and reduce the stress on the grass. I was also bagging the grass clippings because the grass was so tall that if I tried to mulch, there would be huge piles of grass on the lawn and that would just cause the grass under those clumps to get smothered and die. This took a long time. Even with a decent mower, this took around four hours to finish cutting the whole yard where it normally only takes me about two hours to cut the yard. In the end, I had a mountain of yard waste bags and more neat looking lawn. This brings up a great point though that I want to share. You can see how much just cutting your lawn can improve the look of your yard. The before and after shows how even my lawn was looking like a jungle and after I cut the lawn it looks fantastic. Now I'm not sure what exactly caused my lawn to do this. If it was the stuff done last year pre-winter, the work in the spring or just a starter fertilizer or all the above but my lawn has never greened up as fast as it did this year and it was so thick and lush. There was a couple of days that I had no joke just laid in the lawn with my dog and my son playing with his cars. It isn't a perfect lawn. It isn't an award-winning lawn, but it was just so enjoyable to be, to be on. Now it could have been better, but it was a trade-off I had to do. There are lots of seed stalks from the perennial ryegrass, perennial ryegrass, these stalks normally aren't as much of an issue if you keep on top of your mowing. However, with me having let the lawn go to allow the grass seed to germinate, the stalks came in fast and heavy. Right now they are green and softer, but in a while they will dry out and become more pokey on the feet. Eventually they are just worn away by weather, growth and regular cutting, but they'll just be something we have to deal with for now. With getting the lawn cut made it nicer to walk, to all of our planters and get the planters planted. Put in some of our favorite annuals around the yard and all our planters and flower gardens. Lots of wave petunias in different colors, a couple of geraniums, a bunch of begonias, my grandfather's favorite flower, a straw flower plant, a couple of others that I forget the names of, but just looked nice so we planted them. We also got a bundle of snapdragons from my dad that had a bunch of leftover from the seeds that he had started in late winter inside his house. From my dad, we also started a few tomato plants for us and a few different hot pepper plants. We'd given a bunch of seeds to our neighbors as well last fall from some of the hot peppers that we had grown in our garden and he planted them in his LED light area in his basement in late winter. So we got, I believe now, five different varieties of hot pepper in our garden. We also planted some basil, a couple rows of garlic, some onions as well. For Mother's Day, I had got my wife a package of bulbs of oriental hybrid lilies plant in our garden from Costco was a great price. If you're ever looking for perennial bulbs in the early spring, I'd recommend your local garden stores for special varieties that are possibly only around your area 
but for generic varieties, they had a great selection for a good price. There were a dozen bulbs in the bag for around 10 bucks. Now we didn't have enough room in our front flower garden for all of them. We got, I think, seven of them planted. But my wife basically did a trade with a friend of ours, Monique, for a few cucumber plants that she had started from seed. Everyone was happy. Now with our small garden boxes, we know that this isn't enough to survive off, but we enjoy the small joys of growing some nice flowers and some of our own food and pass on a useful and fun skill to our kids. After I'd finished all the planting and cutting of the grass, I did notice that the weeds, especially the thistle, had started to creep into the edges of the lawn from the field again. So out came the sprayer. Now I didn't need to do a blanket application across the whole yard. Plus you can't use a post-emergent herbicide on your young grass, as even though it is a selective herbicide, the baby grass is too weak to be able to handle the pressure from the herbicide. So you don't want to spray until your lawn is fully established. So I got some ortho Killex to try out and did a big spray along the areas where the thistle was coming in strong. In the rest of the yard, I did a quick spot spray on any weeds I saw starting to come through. Never used ortho Killex before, but it is a three-way herbicide, so hopefully it works decently. In the meantime, while waiting to see how the herbicide worked, I finished putting together my new barbecue. Found one that was almost the same as what I had before on sale and grabbed it while I could. Nothing crazy. I was more worried about keeping on budget and having enough room to grill for the family. This is a Grill Turismo by MasterChef. It is a four burner, 48,000 BTU, 650 square inches or 0.42 square meters, a grilling area. It is a modern version of the one I had before that had lasted me almost 13 years. Hope this one lasts as long as the last one did. So far it works good for me, but it's also brand new. Pretty much anything works brand new. Well, now that the grill is together, I'll get something going on the grill can all crack a cold one and enjoy this great time of year. See you next time. Cheers.